Yo, it lights up. Dude, it lights up. That's cool. Nice. Hey, what's up? And welcome back. As a few of you guys know on this channel, something that we love to do is take old things and repaint them to make them look new and cool. We've done this with a few different things, with a Nerf blaster, a Bumblebee helmet, and even a Clone Trooper blaster. We've done this with a few things, and they're one of my favorite videos to kind of make because it shows you that you can make a really high value looking prop out of something that only costs you 20-30 bucks at most. In this video, we are going to be repainting and pimping out Cassian Andor's blaster from Rogue One. Makes noise. To celebrate the release of Andor, which is releasing at the end of September, you're going to be repainting Cassian's blaster from Rogue One. This guy I've had in my closet for a while, along with all my other Nerf guns, and I think it's about time we give him a better paint job, because this orange is just not cutting it for me. Yo, it lights up! Dude, it lights up! That's cool. Nice. Anyway, we're going to be doing a few methods that we've done before in the past, which is obviously the sanding, the priming, the painting, and the dry brushing and weathering. But I want to add a bit of a twist onto this one. Cassian's pistol has an interesting paint job in the movie. It's not necessarily a single flat color or a good base color we can follow. It's more of a gunmetal gray, and that's very hard to replicate using paint. I'm going to be using a different type of spray paint color and system, along with using graphite powder to try and get a more gunmetal look on a plastic prop. I'm going to walk you guys through the whole process, and hopefully we can have an, a prop that looks good by the end. If it doesn't, it'll be very entertaining to watch me struggle and fail. But at least you can learn how to do it better than I do. Let's go. First things first, obviously I want to give props to the Nerf company who actually made this. They were really good at putting detail in these blasters and making them look very nice with all this intricate little detail, all these little greeblies and all these little raised shapes, but their paint jobs are just always shit. So our job is to take this piece that looks beautiful and make it look real. As you guys know, the first step always is to take some sandpaper and get rid of all this raised lettering and logos. All this stuff back here, all this legal mumbo jumbo, the legal bullshit telling you, you know, not to shoot yourself in the eye, not to point it at your face. Yo, it lights up. Dude, it lights up. Not to shoot it at anybody. You know, all that stuff that makes you not want to have fun. So our first step is to take some sandpaper and sand it all off. Now that we have all the raised texture and legal crap sanded off, uh, even this high spot, I know you might think these high spots are a little harder to get off and that's because they're a little bit, they're a little bit more raised, but with enough sandpaper and enough elbow grease, you can get it off the same way and have a smooth finish. Uh, it just takes a little bit more work. Now that we did that, we're just going to take our sandpaper again along with a sanding sponge and just give a nice pass over everything. We do have the shiny plastic, so we want to get rid of that basic shine, but if you look, this one has a bit of a texture on it that I think will grip our paint a little nicer. So we just want to get rid of that basic shine we get on the blaster, just to get a nice even coverage over it. But again, this isn't as important as sanding this off. It's still important because you want to get a good coverage, but getting that raised texture off takes priority, and then you can take the sandpaper and give it a nice pass over. All right, so we got a good pass on the sandpaper. We roughed up the whole piece. We're ready to paint. It's got a good texture to it uh, that the paint will bite into. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, I know I've said in the past that if you can take apart a gun, it's easier to repaint it. Or if you can take apart a prop, it's easier to repaint it. But I've also said don't take apart unnecessary things. Looking at the way this one is set up, obviously I see a lot of screw holes. If I took these screw holes out, the thing would snap out because it's a plastic shell. The thing would snap in half and I'd be able to pull the trigger out, this orange piece out, and this slide out. Looking at it, I'm not even going to bother doing that because the only thing that that would affect is this if you want this whole thing painted. And honestly, I couldn't care less if that extra, what, inch that slides out is painted or not. I couldn't care less. And I don't intend on this to be a functional blaster. 
it still will be functional, but I don't care enough about its functionality as a Nerf gun, more so as a prop. So I'm not going to bother taking these screw holes out because there's electronics, there's um, triggers, there's slides, there's too much in there to deal with, and taking it apart will not benefit us. Um, a good example of this is the clone blaster that we had in a couple videos back. That is where taking it apart did benefit us. But in this sense, it's not going to be worth it to take it apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to go outside and hit this with Rust-Oleum 2X Flat Gray Primer. You guys know I use this all the time. This is my go-to brand of primer and paint in general. I'm going to go hit this with the 2X Primer and see how it looks after that. All right, we brought our blaster back inside after doing a few different coats. We started off with our flat gray primer, which we use on pretty much everything. I then went over it with a gloss gray, gloss dark gray, and then we topped it off with a flat black cover. The reason we did all these layers was simply just to add a little bit more foundation when we start sanding things off to give us a little bit more gradation and a little bit more um, value when we start sanding off. But now I'm gonna do the method that this is new to this video. Uh, I've never done this method before, so I'm excited to try it. We're going to be using graphite powder to try and get a gunmetal finish. So what I'm going to do is take steel wool, this is ultra fine steel wool, and go over the entire blaster just like we would with sandpaper um, to kind of give the graphite a little bit of something to bite into because right now it would just fall off the blaster. You want to make sure you're doing these steps uh, one after the other. So I'm going to take the whole thing with some steel wool and then do the graphite powder with this ridiculously large brush. So this is how the blaster looks in normal daylight and like, woo, look at that shine, baby, with that graphite powder, woo. But um, I noticed a significant issue. It's, uh, it's a little messy. So I'm gonna hit it with a matte clear coat just to kind of set in that graphite powder and hopefully that we can put a, um, we can put some dry brushing on top of that. But uh, I'm really liking that. That was a really interesting method. Okay, so we have our gunmetal finish. We just uh, did a light clear coat passing on it to get the charcoal powder in there. Uh, I didn't want it to be too shiny. I wanted it to be subtle enough just so it looks like gunmetal. And we accomplished that. Our next step is gonna be taking our testers acrylic paint or actually sorry, testers enamel paint, our silver paint that we use to dry brush. We're gonna dry brush the whole piece, but what I'm noticing when I'm looking at references of this blaster is that this front part of the blaster is actually colored silver. So right where it breaks here on this line is colored silver. I noticed that at the start, and that's why I wanted to do this um, steel look so that the back of the blaster still looked steel and wasn't just a flat black color. Uh, when we cover this with the silver now I could go about this a few different ways I could paint on the silver and just coat it all at once But instead what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm going to dry brush heavily on That section so that we still have a little bit of gunmetal underneath. So we're essentially just dry brushing the whole blaster but this section we're dry brushing a lot heavier almost as if this is all silver and then we're gonna go over it with the sandpaper and our shoe polish. So there's a lot of um, addition and subtraction here. Just putting on paint and taking off paint until you get the look that you want. Pro tip, make sure you shake up the paint before you use it. Uh, I didn't do that yet.
Now we're gonna take our shoe polish and do some weathering. Super easy stuff, you guys know how this one works. For this method, you wanna make sure you're dabbing away the shoe polish, not wiping it. All right, that was our first pass with the shoe polish. You can clearly see the difference between that side and that side, which we have not done it to yet. Very clearly see. Um, this type of method is very touch and go. Uh, do it as you like. I personally like my props a little dirtier. I'm a fan of weathering. I like it when things are greasy, things are oily, things are dirty. It makes it look more real to me. But if you don't wanna go super heavy on this, you don't have to. Um, the weathering is always an optional step. You can always go a little lighter with your weathering. Uh, as you saw before, I was really heavy with the weathering, and I, I really let it sit in there. If you do like to go heavy with the weathering, uh, don't be afraid to go really heavy with it. Don't be afraid to let it sit in those cracks a little bit, let it get into all the little grooves, and then just dab it away. You don't want to wipe it. That's just going to give you a, a gross smear. You want to dab it away to give that ingrained kind of dirt and smudge look. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to finish... Uh, weathering the entire gun and then we're going to go back over with our model masters to um, to dry brush back over that to bring out some more of those highlights so kind of like I said it's a layer game you want to add and subtract as you go uh, and kind of do it to your own liking I'm doing this to my personal liking but if yours is different that's totally cool I'm just showing you general methods and what you can do and then you can kind of vary those as you please okay so I have pretty much the gun done the way I was explaining it with the weathering and the dry brushing you could see it's brighter because I went back over it which is exactly what I wanted to do just build up those layers but I do want to try something I forgot I had these cheap ass acrylics now they didn't work with what I intended them to work with months ago but I remembered that they were very watery and they were very thin so I'm thinking I can use these to create almost a scorch effect on this barrel you know so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna take some cheap brushes and I'm gonna try to do a scorch effect almost as if the heat has worn away the metal, you know? So uh, I stress that I'm just going to try. I've never done something like this. I have an airbrush and it would be much more effective with that, but I always strive to try to do things that just anybody can do, even if they don't have the equipment. So I'm gonna try and create the scorch effect using just these paints. Uh, I'll be completely honest, I'm totally winging it. Um, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm totally winging this one. So, yeah. It may have been the wrong color. That looks like shit. Like, actual poop. Okay, I'll be honest. Um, didn't turn out the way I wanted. Probably because they were acrylics and not, um, you know, not really like airbrush paints. But hey, you know, you live and you learn. I wanted to try it. It doesn't look awful. It's just, I wish it looked a little better. But, you know, it's always an opportunity to try again for another one. But yeah, with that said, I think I'm going to hit it with the clear coat again and then call it a day on this. for watching guys i had a lot of fun doing this one i really do like these blaster bee paints i think they're a lot of fun to do taking props that are super cheap that you can find at any sort of toy store or online for really cheap and making them look like professional props that you can use for any sort of cosplay if there are any like rogue one cosplayers out there Jin or so cassie and andor or pretty much anyone 
and you want to pick up this blaster yourself, I'm going to try to find it and leave a link in the description. And you can follow along with this video and do your own paint job. I might offer this one up for sale since I'm running pretty low on blaster space here. So I might sell it to one of you guys if you're interested in that. But anyway, the methods I used in this video can be applied to any sort of nerf blaster or any sort of prop that you want to make. You're more than welcome to get creative with it and kind of pick and choose the levels of which you want to do these things to. I love doing these because they're super easy and they're super inviting to even the most novice of cosplayers and prop makers. But, for this video, that'll be all for this one. I'm super excited to see Andor when it comes out. Let me know what you guys think about the prop and when the show comes out, let me know what you think about it. But, until the next one, I'll see you then. Peace! Peace.